It's September 13th, 2023. I'm going to do the E-mini breakdown. As always, we're going to start with yesterday's context. Yesterday, we opened up into a limit order market. And then Bears put in a following wedge. Three pushes down. One, two, and three. One, two, and three. Bear, bulls get a leg up. And then another measured move. And they close the gap. Let me move this screen down. They close the gap and this the last candle serves an exhaustion and then we sell off. I'll just quickly point out that since bears broke through the breakout point, this breakout is reversing. This is confirmation that the breakout is failing. You could say it's a break and retest of the range, but we sold off. So this is this should be an indicator if you're still long to get out, get out of your position. So yeah, yesterday was a good day. Both sides made money. Started over the range, sold legs, legs. Today we had something pretty similar. That's why I wanted to just go over yesterday a little bit more. We opened up in a limit order market in the first bars, the first six bars of the day. Bulls are buying lows and bears are selling highs. So this is not my ideal. This is a limit order market. So limit order traders are going to be making money if you're setting limits at lows and highs. You're making great points. The market breaks out and we get a sell off a measured move of the breakout leg. <laughs> Let me get this leg down here. And that was a good quick scalp. It's a scalp because there's no pullbacks on the five minute. There were micro pullbacks creating a falling wedge just like yesterday. First push, second push, and third push. That creates a micro, this is a, there we go. The second push is pretty minimal, but you can see it's the wick makes it bigger, so that's the third push, or second push, and third push. This gives us a falling wedge. Same pattern we got yesterday, but on a micro basis. If this is a hard read to get out right there. Um, if you got it right there, kudos to you, because that's a hard read. Bears put in a low of the day, and this is our range so far. Bulls buy lows. I think this was a failed breakout of yesterday's low as well. If you're not out the markets after this bar, uh, you got to get out the markets after this bar. Maybe you wait one more bar to see if it's a first reversals fail, but this is a failed breakout and a huge bar, almost doubling the last bar's range. It literally doubled the bear's last candle, so I would get out the markets or get out shorts on this bar. <laughs> That is bar 11. From bars 11 to bars 15, it's steady buying. And they push right back into the high of the day. Within about one hour, we made a low and went back to the high of the day. So big down, big up, big confusion. We had a press comp, we had a Fed speaker today. I don't pay attention to the news. But the fact that we had a big up, big down into a consolidation and we have a Fed speaker lining up at 11 o'clock kind of adds to why the market was just consolidating. This was tradable. I was in it. Oh, excuse me. I got allergies today. This is tradable. I was in it buying lows. And I got out around these, these bars as we tagged the highs because I didn't want to get stuck into a sell off. And that's kind of what happened. Uh, the press conference took place at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time and we sold there's multiple ways to structure this trade um, you could do it from a failed breakout perspective but I think you would trade you would have if you did it from a failed breakout perspective you would be in a trade during the news and for myself that's not ideal so I wouldn't do that just because of the news but if we didn't have news I may try and get short around these bars I waited for the news and I noticed we were breaking out um, of this and I got short around bar 60 I can't it was bar 58 or bar 60 I added so it was hard to say but my average price was around this uh, level it was right around there so let me just delete these I like to go body to body so that's why I put this candle here or this line here and look at it as a breakdown and they got double the range which is good Pretty much got 2R of the range, almost. They missed it by, they, the bulls kept the gap open, which is a sign of strength, but not by much, not by much. Here we can see three pushes down. We can see multiple types of three pushes down. 
Bars 52 to bars 68 is steady selling. It's a tight bear channel in a trend, in a range, excuse me. So when we're at range lows, it's buy low, sell high, and that's what we got. That's why everyone got out the market. I think the market was in a green, so we're in a range. So let's just count these legs for practice. Here's one leg. We go up, make two legs go up, three, and they try and get a new push higher, but ultimately fail. This is exaggerated and don't freak out. They get a new push down. Oh, Bears make a new push down and then push higher. Hold on. Let me delete these candles. So from here, this bull candle opens and pushes higher. Bulls get another push into the EMA, but ultimately bears push down for one, two, three, and we see profit taken around one R. This candle is a doji, or is a, ra is a tr range bar, because we can see wicks on both ends. But it's a bull body, so that's not good for the bear case. It was brought to my attention by another Al Brooks student on YouTube that if you see a doji in a trend, it could be a first reversal down, but the context makes sense. For today, it was a range bar in a range. You could get maybe one or two more bars and then look to get out of the markets. And that's what we got here, and I thought that was really interesting, because I didn't catch that till after the day was over and I was like wait I learned about this last night and it literally happened so he was saying within ranges and if the context makes sense if you see a doji it's not necessarily the trend is over but within a few bars look to think about taking profits it, all these tips are always dependent on context which is why I'm tiptoeing around my words because I don't want you guys to see a doji and just hold your position and it rips against you because it Turns out it was a doji and a failed breakout, which is completely different from this doji. A doji and a failed breakout is like, um, could be a sign of a reversal if the other side gets continuation. This is a doji within the middle of a range, so it's like a, it's a range within a range. And if you look where we sold off from this miniature range, we sold off at these highs. So this is like a mini supply zone for a different time frame. So, yeah, they got their leg. They got their leg one, leg two. So, I don't. I I can't even remember where I started that sentence, but that was. <laughs> I I don't talk about trading with anyone in real life, and I really like talking about trading. So I enjoy making these YouTube channels. Sometimes I get carried away. YouTube videos. Um, we're just gonna go with this cell zone. <laughs> So yeah, this is a sell zone and we can see that it sold off for three more bars and then the market's ripped back to the EMA kind of like yesterday, but yesterday was way more climactic, climactic. Now I remember what we're talking about, the dojis within the ranges. This is a good example of what I was talking about before I forgot. Let me clear up this chart. This is really cool actually, I didn't know this, okay. So about the dojis within ranges. Here's a doji within a range, but it continued just how it was taught to me. I'll make, I'll, I'm gonna try and put a link in his in the description for his video because he has a cool channel. I just stumbled upon it yesterday. But um, so doji within a range, maybe a couple legs down if it makes sense because we're at the high of the range. We test the bottom of the range, failed breakout. Eighty percent of breakouts fail within a range. <laughs> But then remember I said, if doji is in a reversal, see, this is climactic, and here we kind of have a doji. It, I'm calling it a doji. A, a doji is a, a range bar. We have an upper wick with multiple upper wicks here. So if you were like, oh, coffee and candlesticks said after a doji, we should expect a couple more legs, and then the market dumps on you. Well, that's true, but I also said Oh, I accidentally deleted the EMA. But I also said, if it's climactic and you see a doji, just be careful because context is the most important thing within trading. And we get context throughout the day. Like, this is a breakout. So here's the context for this trade. Uh, the context is we were in a limit order market. We broke out into a stop order market and had a failed breakout. Fools take over for a little bit because bears are... For whatever reason, they're not selling anymore. They don't see value in shorting lows. So since bears aren't shorting lows, the context is a range, buy low, sell high, and look what happened. Context for an uptrend is different. An uptrend 
is buy high and keep buying because you think it's gonna trend all day. So that is kind of got a little bit off topic, but that's like a really important thing that took me, I've been training for like two years and one month now, and I'm just really starting to under, understand the importance of context, which is really helping my trading. So if you guys take anything away from this video, it's context, 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 limit order, trending, trending. Look, this is a, you can make money here in this market, quote unquote trending, but it is hard. It is gonna be annoying as hell to buy this, this candle's high and then sit through, I mean, that's two legs. If you wanna sit through this wick, Look at these wicks. Do you want to really sit through this? That's a micro wedge to the upside. I didn't catch that mid trade, but that's good. That's this is, this is a good read. This is why I like doing these videos because we're all getting better. So that's a micro wedge to the upside. Three pushes up. Are you gonna sit through that after all this? I thought this was actually a really strong setup. This double bottom. If I can just hide the screen a little bit. I thought this was a really strong setup, but then I was thinking, I have my mentor's heads repl uh, voices replaying in my head sometimes, and one time my mentor, Brad, is an Al Brooks student, he has said, this leg does not help the bull case because people see this leg and bears are gonna wanna short again. Maybe bears never got out because they knew it was a range, so they needed to complete their trip kind of thing. So, there I go again, we're talking about the micro wedge. So understanding the context is important. So see, it transitions to the stop order. Bulls have a double bar, this bar is double the size range. Maybe it, maybe don't short, hold short for a little bit. Or if you can handle a complete rip, sell double your position here and get out here, you'll make money, but that's a tough trade. I hope you guys learned something. If you learned something, hit the follow button. I do these breakdowns every day. I'm gonna start doing trade breakdowns on the weekend because I did have a little bit of a tilt moment today. And I'll do those breakdowns on the weekend. Have a good day, guys. Keep studying and use your stop loss. Bye.